Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. He sells death to the highest bidder. He'll sell your life for what he thinks it's worth. He is the mercenary. If you're not ready to buy, be ready to die. The mercenary. His gun does the rest. Franco Nero. Tony Musanti. Jack Palance. Giovanna Rally. The mercenary. The sun at his back. A gun at his side. A town at his mercy. So you've just heard the trailer for disc number 40 in the Italian collection by 88 Films. This one is The Mercenary from 1968. The blurb on the 88 Films website goes a little like this. According to Quentin Tarantino, Sergio Corbucci is one of the greatest Western directors of all time. And after watching the Italian auteur's barnstorming 1968 masterpiece, The Mercenary, he'll be hard pressed to disagree. Django icon Franco Nero stars as the Pollock, a laid-back gun-for-hire who agrees to help a wannabe revolutionary played by Tony Mustaine from The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. But his plans, uh, to put his plans into practice, hot on their trail, however, is the wickedly camp Curly, played by Jack Palance, 23 years before his identically named Oscar-winning turn in City Slickers, who's determined to snag a share of their ever-increasing bounty. Blending bullet spring action with waggish dialogue and a simply stunning Ennio Morricone and Bruno Nicolai score, the mercenary proudly stands at the top of Zapta's western subgenre, a lip-smacking, gorgeously lane street Finally available on UK shores thanks to those sharpshooting banditos at 88 Films. Special features on this are Mercenary Musings by Eric Zalvadar um, and the theatrical trailer. The technical specs are it's region locked to region B, the audio is DTS 2.0, the picture format is 1080p HD 235.1, the runtime is 106 minutes. Uh, the language is English and subtitles are also English. So there we go. This movie is the fucking tits. I absol I was floored by how good this movie was. One, the print is incredible, so I don't know what happened here. The, the negative they must have got their hands on 
must have been immaculate because this genuinely looks as good as any spaghetti western blu-ray I have ever seen rendered for blu-ray format. Honestly, it is absolutely incredible. And it has maybe one of the best stories I've seen. Like, I really, really, really dug this one. It kind of starts in a position where we are, you know, let me let me tell you how I ended up here, sort of story. And then we jump back and capture this kind of arc story of this character called the Pollock, who is played by Franco Nero, who is absolutely out of this world in this this movie. So, 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 so good. Um, as he kind of travels along and these interactions with Tony Mustaine, whose name is, I thought it was Paco Rabanne, which made me laugh quite a bit because, for those that don't know out there, maybe are um, uh, perfume deniers. Paco Rabanne does all that sort of shit. But he's, it's, it was Paco Ramon, I think is his name. And I was like, that's so close. So, 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 so close. Um, as this guy who is trying to start a revolution, trying to win back some of that Mexico for him and his people. And the, their interactions, um, the Pollock just happens to be one of the best gunslingers of all time. So we, we kind of follow up to, we follow most of the movie to bring us back to that point again, which is the kind of, the reuniting of Tony Mustaine's character and Franco Nero. Um, and then we have like a, kind of almost like an epilogue of like 10 minutes on the back end of that. It is beautifully shot. I mean, this movie is incredible. The scenery is gorgeous. The set piece is incredible. Um, it gives you enough action and then isn't scared to lie back on the story. I mean, this movie is about an hour and 48 minutes long. So you'd be thinking, oh, it might be a bit long there, Duncan. No, 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 no. You just relax into this one. It is a, it's a wonderful odyssey of the characters. Uh, Tony Mustaine is amazing in this movie. Those that are familiar with the bird with the crystal plumage, you'll know he's, he's really good in that, but it's a kind of lesser... He doesn't have much stretching room, let's put it that way. He's a guy trying to crack down the case and try and unravel who has done what and what murder he might or might not have seen. And he's good in it, but he's not amazing in it. He is jaw-droppingly good in this movie. So you pair those guys up and you get this incredible kind of for the most part, this odd couple relationship and that one is clearly using the other without necessarily knowing that the other one is actually using him. It, it works really, really well. And then in the background, you've got Jack Palance, who, I know we're joking about City Slickers taking place, what, 23 years after this movie? Um, Jack Palance looks the same age, so this is a guy that clearly just always looked old AF. Um, he's brilliant in this. There's a there's a wonderful scene. I mean, it might be maybe my favourite duel scene in kind of spaghetti western or even western cinema, hands down, where uh, Franco Nero forces uh, Tony Mustaine and uh, Jack Plants to a duel that they'll go on. The both got one shell and both got a rifle. And they have till the count of three, the third bell, to turn around and shoot each other. And as this is kind of, you know, dinging through on the bell, you can see that Mustaine's character is is full of fear and, you know, determination. And Palance appears to be getting off on this, the kind of sadistic smile, the lick of the lips, as each bell goes and the, the, the space in between the bells takes longer. I thought this was absolutely incredible. I mean, I was I was in awe of this set piece. The fact that you've also got it set in a kind of coliseum uh, setting for bullfighting and Mustaine's character who's been kidnapped and is forced to perform here is dressed as a clown. Once again, just what for me. The clowns are fucking everywhere at the moment. They're just... I saw the Joker yesterday, so still very much in my head. And I'm like, oh, here's another revolutionary done in clown makeup um, so you've got this it just it, it crescends in a way which I love and the, the end of that gunfight landed in such a way that actually did surprise me and then further surprise me thought that was that was absolutely incredible the dialogue's a bit stunted I mean that's to be expected but everyone looks like they're having a blast this is a proper epic movie it, it feels huge in scope it feels like a lot of money was spent on it 
when you know that a lot of money was not spent at these movies, it kind of blows my mind. And then lean back on not only incredible cinematography, but the Ennio Morricone score for this one is fucking amazing. Absolutely amazing. I had never heard it before. I actually, funnily enough, heard the, the kind of whistling track of this one, the main kind of throng, the almost the mercenary theme, so to speak. I'd heard that before, but in... in I wasn't actually aware that one it was Morricone, I thought it was someone that had ripped it off. And it would make sense, there's a bit of Bruno Nicolai on this one. But the, the, the score in its entirety, which I've listened to since, is just the tits. I mean, absolutely the tits. Will now be, if I ever go back to Red Dead, um, this will be my theme, this will be my mantra, this will be my soundtrack to the apocalypse. Absolutely loved it, thought it was brilliant. And... It's just a, it's just an incredible movie. I mean, yeah, I, I, I have nothing else to say about this one. It, it is really that good. I have in the past pushed forward controversial-ish sort of selections for the Italian collection and maybe pushed you in a direction where I'm like that. If you fancy a giallo, take a punt on this. Um, this time I'm all in on this one. All my chips are on the table. I'm pushing it all into the mid middle. I'm asking you to call draw on this one because I think this might be up there as one of the best in the collection thus far, 40 discs in. I think we are hitting the peak. We are hitting a peak level that I did not know was out there. I mean, I've seen a couple of spaghetti westerns. I'm not the biggest western fan, which is why I was so shocked that this one resonated so well with me. But this is a this is a fucking incredible movie, and you owe it to yourself as a cinephile to check out The Mercenary. What a movie it is. In terms of score, there ain't no way this ain't getting a five. Motherfucking five. Loved it. Absolutely Loved it. Please, please, please check it out. You can get it fairly inexpensively at the moment. It is available in other places that I will not mention on here, but you can do that. So five out of five for the mercenary. Who would have thought it? Eh? Spaghetti Westerns rocking my world. Is there anything the Italians couldn't do? I don't think so.